Hello everyone, my name is Magdalena and I have been having some technical difficulties getting uh, uh, online. I hope you can all see me, uh, put your thumbs up, say hello, um, uh, send, me, send me some encouragement, I might need them. Uh, and hopefully I will, um, uh, I will guide you through um, today's session. Uh, I did try to do my introduction, but uh, like I said, I just struggled a little bit. So I will just go through with you uh, uh, and um, and just show you and tell you about the materials we're gonna need today. Can everybody hear me? Is that a, is that a yes? Yeah. <laughs> Can you all hear me? Can you all see me? Okay. Yeah. Oh, great. <laughs> Uh, I'm quite nervous, so it's, yeah, um, um, yeah, okay, so um, uh, I will be um, going live for three consecutive Wednesdays. Um, I am working on a project that is good for everybody. Yes, we can hear you. Hey, great. <laughs> Thanks for that. So, um, uh, what my my intention was uh, to build up an insect book, okay, and um, and this is uh, just bear with me a second. Um, and I was going, uh, I was delivering a session for Arcor for children, and I have been working with Arcor for the last two years, uh, or more, in fact, uh, for the last three years, um, and. Um, and throughout these uh, sessions, I was um, I was teaching various subjects. Uh, I am I'm going to talk to you a little bit about myself and my um, education and work experience. Uh, but I will focus on drawing as well. So uh, I've been working in art core for the last uh, three years, and I was delivering mosaic sessions, painting sessions, um, uh, digital sessions for both children and adults. And I seem to have have delivered, uh, seem to have um, uh, gained this reputation that I am, um, that I am um, a big uh, natural world um, uh, fan, and that is very true, and, um, and uh, I try to kind of share my enthusiasm with you, uh, and try and teach you different media, in different mediums, and trying to have a look at the, at the natural world through different mediums, and explore and learn in a fun way. So uh, my uh, background is kind of strange. I mean, it's a mishmash. Um, I am trained as a ceramist. Um, I studied in Transylvania in the um, uh, art college and then came to Derby when I, where I uh, train as, a, as an animator. I have, a, I have a degree in visual communication, so I'm not good at uh, maths or not good at a lot of things, but uh, I have got a good visual memory and I felt like for me it worked really well. Um, this, this way of learning worked really well for me, just painting and kind of being bombarded with information about the about the subject I'm painting, and I find that as a as a very effective medium to uh, teach or to get through to children, um, learning through fun. That's my favorite way. <laughs> so let's begin. Um, for today's session, you will need, and I think you have already seen this. Let me just put it somewhere where you can see clearly. So you will need white paper. Yeah, any white paper would do, but thick paper is better because we're gonna cut it out. Uh, we're going to cut out our, our insects and stick them into our book. You're going to need some color paper so you can build your book. Uh, you're going to need pencils and rubber, so one of each would do. Um, you're going to need some paints. Uh, I put in here uh, in brackets uh, watercolors. Now, if you don't have watercolors, I think any other paint will do. Acrylic is great, uh, but any, any paints would do more or less. Um, Make sure you've got a white as well in the if you're using uh, tubes or if you're using pan watercolors, uh, paint brushes and tissue. Tissue is great for drying your brushes uh, after painting. Um, glue I put in here. If you don't have a print stick like I do, um, 
PVA would do as well, okay? Uh, you need a pot of water, and you need scissors, you need a mixing tray, okay? I'm going to be working with watercolors, and that's a medium I love, although uh, you'd be surprised, I don't have a favorite medium. I have made up my mind. Um, people try to associate me with uh, mosaic because I have a mosaic studio in Banks Mill, but uh, I love all forms of art and any medium from super old to brand new to amazing and uh, new mediums and uh, um, and uh, breakthrough uh, is just fantastic. So um, I, I tend to uh, be quite skeptical and I tend to experience any medium and just see how I feel my, uh, about it myself. And then, and then I kind of share my enthusiasm with the world um, uh, once I kind of get my head around how and anything works. So um, today I'm going to be using some watercolor uh, pans. So this is called pan watercolors because they're dry. Yeah, you could also use tubes of paints like this one. So I've got a tube of gouache as well as watercolor. Uh, I've got my pencils ready, so um, uh, in order to build our um, insect book, uh, I'm going to show, tell you a few things about the project and what we're going to build. So I'm going to give you like an overview for uh, five minutes and then we are going to get drawing and painting. Okay, and this is a great project for adults and children alike. And it doesn't mean that once the tutorial is finished, you have finished your project. Um, it is a continuous project. It is a project that you can, you can carry on for all throughout this um, this uh, lockdown. Okay, so every every day, every week, uh, every time you feel inspired, every time you go in your garden, if you're lucky to have one and and discover a new a new bug, okay, you could just you can just research it and then you can add it to your um, insect book. Um, you can also learn a lot of uh, fun facts about the um, about bugs, and I'm going to tell you a few of uh, the ones that I've, I've discovered. So just before um, just before the lockdown, I was teaching in Arcor, and we were building a, an insect book with the children there. And I have got some really nice example that I'm going to show you. So throughout those three sessions, we are going to add um, a ladybird uh we're gonna add a uh bee and a butterfly those seem to be the most uh, fa uh the, the 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 subjects that children and adults prefer you know um and the most common or the the insects that we see uh, around us most and the insect that we find in our garden most so um this is an example and i think uh i think i know it's uh, Jackson. Jackson, yeah, Jackson has left me her book because unfortunately I was due to deliver those sessions with uh, on the Friday evening, uh, and we started them and we didn't finish them. So uh, some of the insects books are here with me, and this is one that uh, Jackson has uh, made uh, during the art course session, and she's done her wonderful ladybird, and got to session two where she's uh, built a really nice. B okay, so wonderful project, wonderful idea. We were going to write some facts about insects as well, but we didn't get there. So you can do this at home, and if you've already um, done a ladybird, already um, you already have one that you've painted or drawn before, you can add it to your book. So, like I said, you can add lots and lots of pages uh to this book okay and you can staple them together or glue them together um mine is my insect book is still empty uh let me see if i find this is a second example by a boy in uh our core called jacob so jacob very talented little fellow um i'm gonna show the world your artwork <laughs> really cute really talented really dedicated so that's his ladybird um and he got to the second session as well really cute bee let's find that so that's his bee you can see i haven't stapled those together because i don't have a stapler here okay mm. so that's his bee and we could add lots of fun facts so let's begin um have your paper, your white paper ready, um, have your pencil ready, uh, and, um, 
and draw along with me uh, if you're watching this at home. Um, I will show you some more things, but I'm trying not to overload you and keep myself um, yeah, uh, organized. So I drew here a little example, but I want to take you through stages all together. So um, drawing a ladybird, uh, we are starting with the ladybird because it's just like the, the easiest um, uh, insect to draw. Uh, I bet you don't know, do you? Uh, why are they called, why do we call ladybirds uh, uh, ladybirds? Because they are actually beetles, no? Why don't we call them lady beetles? Or why do we call them ladies? Are they just ladies or are they female or male? Or are they both? Does anybody know? <laughs> Any, any, um, uh, you, you, you can try and, and have a guess. Well, I will tell you about that, but uh, yeah, no answers, nobody, everybody's like, ooh, hmm, quickly take Wikipedia, have a look. <laughs> um, so when we are drawing a ladybird, um, if you are drawing along with me, we are going to start, um, as I always do with the construction, Okay, so I'm going to draw a middle line. So I'll try and press harder so you can all see me. Okay, if it's straight, that'd be great. Okay. I think light shining from all directions. So we're going to draw a middle line, ideally straight. And then we are going to draw a oval. Okay, I'm going to do this pretty big so everybody can see it yeah so let me just put my paper down right middle line <laughs> oval good tip on drawing ovals or circles uh, all together is not to use your wrist is to use your shoulder so if you are drawing let me show you over here so if you're drawing an oval it's good to just use your shoulder and elbow not your wrist because the wrist doesn't do a full circle or an oval okay uh i can see lots of people just joining hello if you've only just joined me i am going to take you through the uh, wonderful world of um, insects um starting with a simple example today of ladybirds uh, so I have drawn my um, oval, middle line, okay, and then I'm going to add a section to the top here because the body or the lower body of a ladybird, yeah, it's not quite oval, it's got a uh, straight line here, okay, that already looks like a ladybird, just need two spots, so if you are, if you're not super into uh, the life of um, you're not super um, uh, let's say if uh, you don't want to draw like a like a, um, a professional uh, artist or you want to draw a quick impression of the ladybird everybody will know that that's a ladybird already <laughs> oh love your studio well, thank you i have a little pet here who's very enthusiastic to go live as well aren't you yeah, and so if you hear or see any cats jumping on my screen, <laughs> yeah, he's just waiting to go live as well. Shall I say hello? No? You wanna you wanna come up? Yeah, he wants to, but uh, he's not allowed right now. So um, um, going back to my ladybird, I'm going to rub out the 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 first the top section of my ladybird here. Okay, and ladybirds, uh, just like every other beetle, uh, have got a lower um, uh, part or lower uh, body or uh, and an upper upper body. Okay, they don't just have the uh, body and the head; they have the body which here, which is the lower body, and then they have this section here called the uh, ah, the pronotum. Okay, pronotum. It's like the abdomen. The equivalent of the abdomen okay so that's not the head most people would think okay that's it that's the head and that's the body no not true all beetles all insects have got the lower body and upper body called the pronotum okay if i'm not pronouncing this right you are welcome to tell me off um 
So this is the equivalent of the abdomen. Right, okay, that's looking fine. Uh, I'm not a specialist in drawing upside down or drawing um, um, this way round. I normally draw flat on the table. So if my ladybird looks slightly out of proportions, I do apologize. I'm sure you'll do a much better job. Okay, so we've got the ignore the spots for now. I will, I will, um, I will um, uh, 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 draw those slightly, um, I'll draw them later on, okay? So just like every other beetle, uh, the ladybirds have got uh, six legs, okay? Their head, you'd be surprised, so that's like the lower body, upper body, and head, okay? So the head is here, it's only teeny, and they've got eyes, they look like little triangles, like that. <laughs> Oh, hello, Linda. <laughs> I hope Veda's watching. Hi, Veda. <laughs> so here, you've got the two triangles, which are the eyes. Okay. And then you've got the little nose here. Or perhaps it's not a nose. Um, and the, they've got the antennas. Okay, and on the other side, okay, right, uh, what else have we got? So we've got the six legs that we need to draw. Uh, now, you will uh, notice that if that was the head, well, I've not seen a bug or a creature that's got legs onto growing from its head, so it will make more sense that this is the upper body rather than the head because the legs, the front uh, legs start here, okay? So let me just check that everything's going fine, okay? So, front legs, they start there, okay? And if you don't know how to draw them, they are quite complex. They have got the, just like our legs, they've got the femur, the tibia, and the tarsus. A little claws that they can use to hang on to leaves upside down and so on. They are really complex creatures although they're so tiny they are still a wonder. Okay so we've got the tibia, let me see where am I, tibia, femur and then we've got the little sections, the little claws. Okay, what are they called? The tarsus claws. Okay, tarsus claws. There you go, another word for you. So that's that, yeah. How's that looking? Quite big. I'm going to make the body a little bit more obvious as well. Right, perfect. Now, my ladybird, if I was to draw a more accurate one, I would make the lower part the, the 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 end of the body slightly pointier okay like that and then rub out yeah we will have a little break where we just re review our drawings and you can also send me all your drawings to have a look in real time that would be fun wouldn't it um because i'm drawing uh live and i'm quite nervous so <laughs> Uh, it would be nice to see what other people uh, feel like. Okay, I've got lots of friends who are watching me as well. So uh, if you've only just joined us, um, welcome. <laughs> uh, we are drawing a ladybird today. Um, and we've drawn the upper body, lower body, head, antennas, uh, front legs. And now we've got to draw the last two, uh, four legs, so two on each side. So again, same thing, uh, the femur, uh, the tibia going back, and then the uh, tarus claw, the tarus, which is this section here, and then the tarus claw, which looks like, a, like an anchor. <laughs> That's not looking bad at all. Um, right, for an uh, upside down drawing. <laughs> Okay, last one on this side, going back, tibia, femur, uh, tarus, tarus claw. 
I'm going to remember all those names now that I've been uh, telling you so many times. In, um, in our culture, we have got a joke uh, about teachers saying, I've explained it so many times that I got to understand it myself. And that's what I'm doing. I'm studying, um, I'm studying bugs and insects uh, for my classes so much that I am just fascinated. And I go, why didn't I know this earlier? <laughs> you will be surprised how much of an impact they have in our lives. So repeat. And again, I'm sure you don't need that much time to draw those. So tibia, femur, tarus, tarus claw. Okay, you can look them up on the internet if you want to know the um, um, exact way of uh, spelling them. Let me just look through your comments. <laughs> A bit. Oh, okay. Hi, Faiza. <laughs> oh, thank you. Thank you. I'm doing great. Um, yeah, thank you very much. That really helps. That really helps. So I've got the, um, uh, the body all sorted now. It's looking uh, good. And um, I'm going to uh, add some more details onto the upper body. It's like a pattern and it looks kind of weird because it's kind of going in and out, in and out, but it's got a nice symmetrical shape. So once you draw the first half, it's fine. I'm looking at the picture here um, and you're welcome to uh, have a look at this one as well. So just in case I'm, you thought I'm drawing from memory, here's the disappointment. I'm actually looking at the reference photo uh, and this is the uh, cover of a book called the Natural, Naturalist Handbooks or uh, yeah, Naturalist Handbook uh and looking at ladybirds and how many um types of ladybirds how many patterns so you see if you're running uh, low on red you don't have to draw the red one you could draw yellow or black or um, a brown color one so yeah it's so fun um and we are going to look at patterns even more so um I'm going to draw the head, uh, sorry, not the head, look, I'm even believing it myself now. I'm going to draw the pattern on the, um, uh, what's it called again, the pro pronotum, okay, pronotum perhaps, the upper body, not the head, not the head, the head's there, okay. And that's my pattern there. Can you see? It's got a very nice, very organic shape. You can almost draw it like a love heart in the middle, yeah, here, love heart, and then it's got an attachment to the sides, on each side, and that's my ladybird. Now, going back to why are we calling ladybirds ladybirds, um, um, this uh, ladybird that I'm going to draw has got seven spots. Now, ladybirds, you might not know this, the ladybirds are super, super, super um, uh, useful and super, they, they are a savior. And the reason they were called um, ladybirds is because uh, in the Middle Ages, when uh, people rely so much on farming, they were a savior. They were the savior. They were, they were um, bugs sent by our lady, which uh, um, it's a term that uh, people use uh, in uh, Christianity or in, you know, um, uh, uh, yeah. <laughs> so so uh, they would say uh, the farmers were kind of struggling to get their um, uh, crops because they had pests, because they had they had uh, plant uh, lice or um, what what are they called uh, let me just think the um yeah the little bugs that are uh, even smaller than um, than uh, ladybirds that were eating um the amph i can't remember what they call amphis amphis anybody no <sighs> uh, uh, aphids aphids there you go thank you thank you um <laughs> Good brain. So the aphids, the aphids were destroying a farmer's crops. Um, so the farmers were desperate and um, somehow ladybirds made their appearance into the crops and they ate so many aphids that were 
the pests that were destroying the crops um, that the farmer were just amazed. They were shocked and they were so happy about um, about encountering those little creatures that they called them uh, ladybirds. They were the send. They were they were sent by our lady, okay, Saint Mary. And the uh, seven spots, uh, it's got strong links with the Christian culture or with the uh, with pretty much any religion of the world. You know, the God made world the world in the in the seventh day or sixth day, and then he rested. So, so they people in the Middle Ages they thought, you know, this was a scent from um, our lady. So we are going to say we are call, going to call those beetles, although they're beetles, we're gonna call them ladybirds because they were sent to save our crops, and they still do today. If you are growing your own vegetables, uh, you'll see that lots of aphids are going to eat your flowers and then obviously if you if your flowers get eaten then um, uh, your crops uh, will fail so now that we know that lady birds they're amazing and i am a, I, I, i'm keen on gardening and i grow uh, vegetables myself and i know that whenever i grow um broad beans which i love they're delicious whenever i grow broad beans um they have lots of tiny black spots, especially on the flowers and those aphids, they are eating my crops. And um, uh, scientists have tried to engineer um, ladybirds who can't fly, so kind of taking away their wings, but not harming them, uh, br uh, uh, creating a species that hasn't got lay, uh, that hasn't got wings. So it stays wherever you put them. And they are very good for cleaning the garden, for helping your crops. and. We should look after them because they are just fantastic little creatures and um, our agriculture over time and our evolution um, uh, depends very very much on them uh, uh, just as well as pretty much any any other creature that we we think oh we understand everything but actually there's lots more we don't understand and we mustn't um, things take things for granted and we have to this is a little bit of uh, a bit of philosophy here. We have to treat everybody equal because we do treat ourselves equal as human beings. Although you know, one small, one big, one's one color, one's another color. It's the same with the ladybirds. We are all useful. We're all um, a big family, and although we think we're at the top of the chain, sometimes we see that nature goes, "Ah, oh, well, are you really?" <laughs> So um, we have to just respect everybody equally and um, just try and understand their natural world because it's the only world we've got. Okay, so hope that's uh, <laughs> brought your spirit up. Yeah, uh, we are not against nature. We are working with nature and we love nature and we must protect nature just because it's, yeah, because it does the best to protect us. And only because we don't understand everything around us doesn't mean we are superior as a race, okay? So this is a little family and they're just as useful, okay? So um, back to painting. I've done my drawing, it's looking great. I'm going to uh, start painting. I've got my paintbrush and I'm going to put a red layer. If you have a dark red, um, then try not to use that one. We're going to go for a cadmium red, so one that's closer to orange or slightly closer to orange rather than just dark red. OK, so let me show you if you don't have the red um, that is cadmium type or closer to cadmium, then we are going to just add a little bit of orange. So I'm using here a darker red and an orange mixing together and i'm just going to cover it nicely and it shouldn't take long so i'm going to avoid the spots for now because then at least i can do that while um, everything else is drying i can cover that middle line because i drew it rather heavily okay and Trying to quickly, no time flies when you're having fun. I noticed that in my classes, but feels like the live classes are just as good fun and they go really quickly. 
So painting quickly, uh, your ladybird, I'm drawing on A4 paper, my whole insect book will be um, based around that size. So I'm going to be drawing on A4. And because I'm going to cut this out and place it into my um, insect book, I can add some fun facts and all the things that you've learned okay, today, uh, as well as your findings. And I do, I would like to invite you all to share your knowledge and to share your experience. And if there's anything I didn't mention or anything I didn't explain very well, you will have me back next week so you can just tell me where I went wrong and what I should do to explain it better next time. Okay, I'm looking at my painting. I'm putting a second layer of red paint over my ladybird. And I'm going to do the same on the other side. And if I look like I'm rushing, I am. <laughs> Let me look at your comments. So I've got lots of people watching. It's so nice to see you all. <laughs> Slugs as well. Caroline says, I, I'm not sure where was that from. <laughs> Slugs are amazing. I know there's so many things we could be drawing, but um, um, we are just going to focus on one at a time and then you could even share your insect book or next time we're back in our core and hopefully it wouldn't take long. Um, you can bring your insect book with us or to show us. And uh, maybe we can even organize a little exhibition. I don't know. It's a thought. No, I've got my <laughs> ladybird color top here. All themed up. Okay, so almost ready. And thank you for, thank you for all the comments. Um, and thank you for um, uh, encouraging me and for um, uh, having a look at my little studio here. This is um, I live in a in an old Victorian house, and this is the second floor. So I live with another two family members, and we all have our floor each, which is helpful, um, especially when we're all stuck inside for so long. And this is uh, this is where I come uh, and hide. This is my hobby room. I've got a piano and some flowers and lots of paints and lots of mosaic supplies. Where I, um, you know, I I can't I can't just work from downstairs because you can imagine glass going everywhere and that's not a nice thing to throw on. So ladybird ready. Ladybirds lower body upper body is got a slight different color so you could see here we've got a like a light uh, almost like a ochre although it looks almost white here the um uh, hang on the pro pronotum pronotum the upper body yeah the upper body called the pronotum has got a um like a very pale yellow ochre color and then black black head um, burnt umber, uh, burnt sienna on so browns um, uh, on the legs and the black spots. So let's go back to our painting. Hope you're all doing yours. Yeah, if you've got one, share it with me. Mm -hmm. But they eat all my plants. Oh, the slugs. <laughs> oh yeah, I know, I know. Slugs eat your plants. Oh yeah, absolutely. They are. They are very hard to control, and unfortunately. <laughs> Unfortunately, ladybirds are not big enough to eat your slugs, but they would if they could, you know, they would because they are the protectors of crops. So I'm going to put a, um, a layer of like a light brown or light brown with a bit of yellow ochre. So yellow ochre is that mustard color. OK, so quickly going through there here. Yeah, 
So I said the uh, legs, the legs, we can just cover the legs, the anus or the antennas um, with this same color, just to save us having to wash the brush and having to uh, mix paints again. So that's like a light sienna, burnt sienna. Oh, awesome. And you can see I've done it on the legs as well. Okay, same here, just a quick wash, same there, same here, same there. Okay, and again, burnt sienna, yellow ochre, go over your leg. Okay, beautiful. Um, if you want to add further details, you can do so uh, even after the tutori tutorial has finished, I can upload through our core a image of the ladybird I was working from, just so you can all have a look, so you don't feel like, well, we don't have your reference, and, you know, the internet is full of references. Um, so, but I'm going to share mine, and if it helps, every time I do a tutorial like this, I'm going to share my reference photo as well, just so you can see it first, just to, so you can follow it, and you can kind of um, draw along with me, and just tell me where I've gone off feast. Okay, so that's that. Um, ladybird, the red doesn't look great. It should, it will need... Let me see. We need a bit more sort of blending in uh, or a little bit of an extra wash. I mean, if you look from here, that looks good, doesn't it? But if you look as a closer, you could see my washes and it could do with an extra layer of uh, red paint. I hope you're not commenting because you're all busy painting, okay? We only have five more minutes, so I'm going to speed up. Or maybe if I warm, yeah, maybe we we've got we, we could go uh, go go uh, we could carry on for another ten minutes because I've started slightly late. So again, just quickly uh, paint in your seven spots. Okay, I'm trying to lean it slightly because it will dribble, it will leak, or it will bleed, as we say in watercolor terms, the paint will bleed into the red or in, onto my paper. So, and you see my spots there? Beautiful. So I'm going to cover the spots in black. And then, not quite finished yet, I'm going to paint uh, my seventh spot here Okay, this one's got a bit of a strange shape and a highlight because it's just overlapping the elytra. The elytra is the name for the lower body. So this section here, the elytra will just split like so. It covers, yeah, it covers the wings. So the ladybirds have got wings and they can fly although they do like to climb their plants all the way to the top and then take off from there. So I've got the spots painted, I've got the head, the, again I'm calling it head, I've got the um, protonum, the upper part of the body with a pattern that's also black painted so quickly. See, sometimes you're thinking 45 minutes, well, that's a long time, but when you start painting, you just lose track of time. And uh, I think uh, for me, painting has helped me a lot to relax and, um, you know, and just um, enjoy life a little bit more and kind of live into the present moment, looking at details and kind of taught me a lot more about the natural world because that's the time when you stop and observe and those details they're just awesome 
nature is just amazing and sometimes we just need to stop <laughs> <laughs> i told you didn't i oh my goodness thanks then now say hello <laughs> <laughs> now that scared me <laughs> huh. so that was Dexter live <laughs> he wouldn't he doesn't like to be put off oh sweetheart he he kind of waits and waits and then he goes what are you doing there how are ladybirds more important than me <laughs> I hope that didn't give you a fright oh so <laughs> It did give me a fright because I didn't see that coming. It's like when you've got cats, you have to, you have to always be careful how you move your feet or <laughs> how you sleep, because if they think that something moving, they might jump on it. <laughs> oh, right. I've calmed down a little. Uh, I finished my ladybird. I finished my painting. Um, but uh, if you have got some white paints, which I do here, or a white pencil, which I do here, uh, because I'm, I'm running out of time, I'm going to use my pencil just to show you where the highlight goes. Um, the highlight, as you can see in my image here, is, is on to the right side, but the whole elytra, it's got like a nice sheen to it. So I'm going to shade, I'm going to, sorry, not shade, well, I'm shading, but I'm going to add my highlight over all of my red and white spots. And you can do that, can you see? Okay, you can do that as well with, um, uh, with paints. If I paint my work even better. So if you've got some paints around you, um, if you've got a white paint, not all sets, not all watercolor sets come with white. If you've got your watercolor white, then you can sprinkle or uh, uh, you can just um, uh, staple, sorry, not sprinkle. I think in lunchtime. Uh, you can just staple some white dots. Can you see there? Okay, for the highlight, I don't want too many and I don't want them too uniform, so, and they will dry out a little bit clearer, so they will dry more transparent. Now, once we've done this, uh, we are going to pick up our scissors and we are going to cut round our shape. Um, like I said, I'm going to attach the reference photo. You don't have to come too close to all your legs. You can just cut near. I'm not, I'm obviously not going to do it so neatly now, but I'm going to do it neat enough so I can just come back to it later and, um, and add a little bit or cut a little bit finer. Okay. So, <sighs> cut, cut, cut. And then, let's say that's my uh, first uh, um, alteration. So I've got my bug here looking nice. Um, I can cut more in between to look even nicer. And then I'm going to, and I'm not going to glue it right now, yeah. But what we're going to do is we are going to take our insect book. So this is just folded uh, paper. Uh, any color you've got that would be great. So I folded two sheets of A3. If you don't have sheets of A3 paper, not to worry. Use any paper you've got. Um, you can use A4. Um, so I've got green and I've got red and I'm going to add more pages as we go along. There's nothing in there. Now my font here on my insect book, it's inspired by the patterns on bugs. So you can have a look at other bugs and make your own type and or your own font in fact and the same way the same way we did the ladybird i did my text i drew it i painted it and then i cut it out and stuck it here so it's really fun to do and once i open it i can stick the ladybird either on green or on red like so okay i think it'll look nice on red once it's cut out really nicely yep and 
and then we can add some little um, speech bubbles or some thoughts or some idea or you can write this is what I did live um, through the hardcore video and I really loved it and this is today's date and with thanks to all the hardcore team who has have organized and who are or um, are working really hard to keep us all creative and um, and connected. So for next week, I'm going to have ready for you a bumblebee. Okay, so this is one I prepared early, still not cut out perfectly. I'm still working on it, but you can see that will be the next thing. And it could go, you could create little version of it, of your bumblebee to go onto your, um, onto your um, uh, front page. I've also, when I made my um, material list, I made little bugs here, can you see? So the whole, um, so the whole uh, insect book could be covered with little variations. You could have the big ladybird, uh that's red with the, the seven spot ladybird and then you could have smaller versions of that around her depending on how big or how small you drew you want to make sure you fill your uh page nicely and then you want to do the same uh for the bee and for the butterfly i've got that ready too so here's my bee bumblebee that could go in look how nice that's gonna look so hopefully just uh it's not all cut perfectly but hey ho getting there <laughs> and i'm just loving i'm just loving this project so i hope you do too because there's no better way um uh, of learning about the natural world than experiencing it and looking at the details closely and learning and reading about those while you do your drawing because when you're gonna do your drawing or when you're gonna have a look at your drawing again that's a week after you're gonna remember all the things that we drew together okay and all the things that we've discussed together so this is the big happy family of uh, uh, insects and it's all gonna go let me see it's all gonna go into our into our insect book and i'm going to do just like i did today for the ladybird i'm going to do a video on um how to create um those uh, beautiful insects and their patterns live with you from my studio uh, on behalf of our i want to thank you all for joining me and i want to see your drawings and um many thanks to ruchita zahir uh, Caroline, uh, Iona, um, uh, David, uh, have I missed anybody? Mm, um, 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 probably. Uh, yeah, can't remember our names. I do apologize, but many thanks for 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 all your hard work and for keeping us artists uh, in work and for um, kind of looking after us in such difficult times. Um, I hope you all stay safe. Yeah, inside. And if you go outside, make sure, yeah, when you look into your garden, check out for those amazing creatures that are a continuous source of inspiration. Um, thank you very much for watching. I hope you had fun. I hope you're going to share your video and I am going to see you back next Wednesday at one o'clock. And my test run will work next week, surely, surely, because I know what I'm doing now. Okay, <laughs> love to you all. Bye.